Hello and welcome to another video from WRL. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a barrow crossing uh, here in Chippenham Junction. Um, the way in and out of the station is uh, across the end of the platform here, um, across the line, and down along the wall to the um, to the roadway. So, uh, usually uh, in a lot of rural locations, uh, you'd have a a what's called a barrow crossing, which is basically just a pathway across the lines and there's usually some signage telling people to watch out for the trains and so on. It's usually a, a slow speed limit uh, for the trains through here. So what we're going to do is uh, build a barrow crossing and to do that uh, you're going to need some grey and some brown paint. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. And you're also going to need uh, some sort of material for the barrow crossing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use these um, matchstick like uh, craft sticks. I got a big bag of about 100 of them or so for about $2 off of uh, Hobby Link. Uh, but you could also use matchsticks, um, they're about the same size. And what we're going to do is uh, basically going to cut these, and uh, probably just need one of them, but I cut them into little strips um, so they fit um, between the two clips uh, for the sleepers and if we use the uh, clips for the sleepers as a guide um, you won't run into a problem with these uh, catching on the um, on actual uh, wheels of the train itself. This is on a curve so it's a little bit more challenging but shouldn't be too bad. Uh, so what we're going to do is cut these into place uh, make sure that they fit, do a quick test run with a coach and then glue them in place and uh, paint them. So uh, first things first, uh, we're going to need to measure them up. So for that, uh, we're going to use a pencil and like so. So we're just going to put that in place like that and grab the pencil to sort of roughly mark off where the rail is. And you can use whatever you want. Uh, to cut these, I'm going to use an old pair of wire snips. And as you can imagine, that was pretty, pretty simple to do. And so you just want to test fit it. So you can see here, this is a little bit too big. So I'm going to go trim it down just a little bit. Now, usually with this thing, it's a bit of trial and error to get it right. Depending on what you're using to cut, it may or may not cut cleanly. And so that works uh, pretty well. It fits right in there in between the uh, the two. And so what next we're going to do is just take a coach to test it. So I'm going to use say Mark 1 coach. Okay, so we're going to just test this with the coach. So, you're basically looking for is making sure the food isn't impeded by it. It looks like it might. That's good. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, duplicate this up a few times and then uh, glue it into place. Okay, so you can see here what we're doing is uh, we've got them lined up and we're just going to go and test the video that there's no movement. Looks like we've got that pretty good. So um, next we're going to glue them in place and then uh, and paint them. Uh, you can see here I've gone four across. Um, I could probably gone five, but this is just going to be for foot traffic, so I don't think it really needs to be uh, much bigger than that. Okay, so you can see um, I ended up making a few more, and uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven in there, and the last one I think is a little bit uh, messed up. And uh, we just used a, a stick to uh, kind of put them in place there. And just uh, 
quick test with the um, coach tour just to make sure that none of them are too wide. It looks like there might be a few um, that are just in the wrong position. Let's see how that works. See there, there's a separate chest to make sure that they're in the, in the right place. Of a deep middle with a, a crutch. See, I see there. Uh, there's one in the middle that seems to be just a fraction too long. Which is not something you want to get wrong. Uh, if you get this wrong, uh, you're going to have a few problems. So the new ones we added that are causing some trouble here. There we go. That's looking good now. Okay, so now that we have that in place, um, we're just going to glue it. Uh, well, that's pretty straightforward. You just take the PVA glue here and just. So I just got a glob of it. Now it'll take a while for that to uh, kind of dry. So uh, what you're gonna do, just take the stick here, just uh, kind of glob that in place. And uh, once this uh, kind of seeps through and, and glues, uh, you should be good to go. Okay, so you can see here the glue is. Uh, Pretty much almost seep through at this point. What we're going to do is just take this um, paper clip and just make sure that that gap between the rails and where the barrel crossing is going is still there. Because um, if it's not, you're going to have some serious problems. So you can see there it had, the glue had caused it to shift slightly. So you're just going to use the paper clip to uh, get it right. Now there will be a small bit of residue. Um, that you'll have to clean off the track, it's no big deal. Um, so we're going to let this uh, sit and then we'll go ahead and paint it and you'll see the end result. Um, you do want to make sure that it's still flattened out. So again, once you flatten that part out, just take the paper clip and make sure there is indeed Still a gap on both sides, and in some cases it's going to be the slightest of gaps, but you want to try to make it as accurate as possible, because if you do not, you will have problems, and the reason you'll have problems is that you'll have glued a piece of wood <laughs> um, probably to a point where it impedes the uh, wheel flanges of the uh, loco or the uh, coaches and when they go over that they'll derail so um, you just want to make sure that it's close enough that it looks realistic but it's uh, far away enough that you're not going to have any logistical problems I think that's uh, that's it. So, what we're going to do next, uh, once this dries, is uh, mix um, some gloss brown with some uh, grey paint, and uh, probably more grey with a touch of brown, and that will give us the look and feel that we want for the barrow crossing there. Now, the other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut up some more of these 
and put them on either side so that you can uh, see how that's done. And so typically you probably have at least one more set on this side here and on this side here uh, creating the, the whole walkway. So um, we're going to let that dry and um, we'll get back to this shortly. Okay, so uh, here you can see the uh, end product. Uh, we have some of the uh, barrel crossing going this way and then over the track we have the smaller pieces uh, going this way and on the other side just to create a ramp we've got it uh, going the other way as well and you can see it's been uh, it's glued in and we've painted it with kind of a mix of the uh, brown and grey so it has this kind of uh, aged wood look and it also gets a uh, pretty kind of close um, match to the ground here so um, we also added some uh, other uh, scenery items here, I don't know if they're in the video, yeah they are. Um, you can see the um, the relay boxes here and we'll add some some signaling and um, we'll probably add some, some signage and stuff here um, about the barrow crossing and likewise we'll probably put a, a sign over on the side as well and we'll print those up and, um, and make it up that way. So there you have it, um, that's uh, how to do a barrow crossing and I uh, hope you found this video useful and until next time.